This is Burn the Ship Podcast. And what we do is connect entrepreneurs with professionals that can help them go all in on their business. And you guys, Sora, Christine, have been an incredible um, experience already just being in the office and having conversations with you guys. Um, it really looks like we have a lot of synergy within our business. But I think that the value that you guys bring and the ability to tap into a new market and continue to, to diversify your business has been a really cool um, just conversation here at the beginning. So I won't steal your thunder. I'll let you guys kind of introduce yourselves and, and introduce your roles in your business. Um, and then we'll kind of go from there. We'll kind of help you guys tell your story. Well, my name is Sora Yi. I am the CFO of KC <laughs> Licensed Paralegal. Um, I do all the manual labor and usually take care of all the money that comes in through our business. Cool. So my name is Christine Choi. Uh, I guess I'm the CEO. <laughs> you are the CEO. So I've been running this business, alcohol license consulting company, for the last 20 years. Um, and... We service all Georgia business owners for restaurants or gas stations or liquor store. Any business that requires alcohol license, we get we get involved and help them. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And it's pretty cool. I, I think that the you know the process where you guys are talking to people is like mm -hmm. I'm finally about to open my insert whatever you know liquor store gas station mm -hmm. restaurant all of those things so you guys are talking to people and we we have a lot of those experiences as well where we're talking to people and they're like hey i'm just about to do this or like i'm in startup mode of this and it's about to be done it's about to be happening you guys are talking to people in like in a really exciting mm -hmm. phase of their business yeah we do uh, you know people come people call and say hey you know i'm about to buy this restaurant and i need uh, to change the alcohol license to my name, what do I do? You know, I know I had a business, let's say, in Gwinnett County. Now I'm opening up a business in Fulton. I'm thinking it's going to be the same thing. But, you know, w what can you tell me about it? And I tell them straight out, it's a whole different ballgame right. <laughs> from Gwinnett to Fulton. You know, it's a, it's a different game, you know. So um, I always ask them to come to me first or maybe talk to me about what they're trying to do. You know, are you the only owner? Are you trying to sell um, beer, wine, liquor? You know, what kind of business is it? And, you know, where is this um, look business at? Because a lot of times people think, oh, OK, my address has Duluth. Uh, but we're in Gwinnett, so we, you know, I'm gonna get my license from Gwinnett. But sometimes, if you're in city limit, you don't go to Gwinnett to get alcohol license. You have to go to city of Duluth. And a lot of people don't know what where they need to go. First of all, so I tell them, I guide them. You know, this is what we can do. You know, we get the alcohol license from sure. the city, which we call local license. And then not only that, a lot of people don't know the fact that they have to get the license from state too. <laughs> so you get the license from local, and then with that, you have to go to the state and get the alcohol license from state sure. so you can sell alcohol. So um, it's it's just people don't know what to do. And, you know, from my 20 years um, of experience, you know, I help them to get the alcohol license. That's sure. my job. So walk, walk me through a little bit of your story of getting into business. Tell me kind of what these these last 20 something odd years like where where mm -hmm. were you at when you decided, hey, I'm starting my own business. Mm -hmm. I'm doing my own thing. I can do this. You know, what? where were you at in your life and what was okay. kind of the catalyst for that? So ever since 1992, um, I started as a legal secretary at a law firm. So um, being a legal secretary, being in legal field, you know, I've done immigration. I've done business transactions, you know, um, criminal, you know, personal injury case, you know, I've done everything. But I was just a legal secretary. <laughs> and, you know, my salary um, it wouldn't grow a lot. It was always right. like really low. And I became single mom um, 20 years ago. And uh, I wanted something better for my life and for my kids. So I wanted to do something different. And I kind of knew that there is a good, big market out there for alcohol license. Because if you think about it, you know, there's so many restaurants, you know, so many gas stations, liquor store, you know, so many businesses that require alcohol license, right? So every time there's change of ownership, meaning every time when there's a change right. of ownership, 
And every time someone's trying to open this restaurant or you know anything with alcohol license, they have to get their license. But it's not it's not that easy. You know, there's ordinance that you have to follow. There's application. Sometimes you have to go to hearing. You know, some documentation you must have. You know, legal publication you have to put it in the newspaper. I mean, there's so many things that you have to do depending on where you want to open up or where you want to purchase just the business. So um, I knew there's a big market out there. So I took a risk. I said, okay, well, I'm not going to just stay as a legal assistant, you know, making like two, three thousand a month. You know, it wasn't good enough for me and my three kids, you know, being a single mom. Sure. So mm-hmm. I said, I'm going to go out there and, and, and try. Was and, there any type of like legis like as you can think of over those like 20 30 year period mm-hmm. i guess i guess kind of that 30 year period because even before you were on your own i guess this this question still applies but were there any like market or like political or office changes that kind of affected like the ordinance as a whole or like anything like that like i'm thinking new president elected and they're changing mm-hmm. legislation or if there was um like mm-hmm. a like a period where or like 2008 where the market was down the great mm-hmm. recession is that did any of that have like a big change on the way you guys were doing business or the amount of business you guys were doing? See, it, it, no, no, it's been same. But if you think about it, all the license are um, like locally, first of all, local license. When I say local, you know, the cities have the, their own ordinance, their own regulation and things like that. So time to time they change it, you know. So sure. my job is to make sure that I am familiar with the current or ordinance. Even though I did ECWA application, let's say five years ago, I don't just do the application. I make sure I review the ordinance and make sure that nothing has been changed. And I make sure that there's a lot of things that I, I, I mean, I have to be familiar with the ordinance before sure. I get on, you know, um, work on the application because I don't want to end up realizing something later after we turn in the application, you know what I mean? So yeah, a lot of things changes, but it's not like like law changes, big things change. You know, nowadays after COVID- Process changes. Yeah, process, yeah. So after the COVID, the biggest thing that changes probably people can like deliver um, to go alcohol, mm-hmm. you know, something that you didn't see before pandemic, sure. you know. So that's that's the kind of thing, only thing, kind of like big thing changed ever since. But um, just the minor changes with the cities and counties, uh, not not the government or not the big. Um, election. Yeah, election. Sure. No, it doesn't really affect. What about you? What is your story? And how, and kind of walk me through the the past few years and what led you kind of on this mm-hmm. convergent path in this business. Um, past few years, you know, after graduating college, like any other person outside of college, you're looking for a job. You want to know what your next step is in life. And I kind of went in going at different kind of jobs. I did sales with clothing lines. Um, I worked at the mall to try to do winter sales with them. Um, And then I moved forward and worked in the restaurant industry for about three years. I worked in-house as a hostess, waiter, worked my way to bartender, and then even went up to like a um, manager in training. And I moved to Boston to work as a manager for a big restaurant up there as well and train with them. I realized I didn't want to do in-house anymore. I wanted to do something outside of it that didn't take too much effort out of my body physically, especially being young. I didn't want to put myself through that excess. And I came down here and there's a lot of, like Christine said, there's just a lot of work that goes into this. It's not just the paperwork. It's not just the connections. It's all those little things you have to do as like in the process and one it's not a one man's job Mm -hmm. so I came in and decided to lend a hand do all the manual labor do everything that I could do to grow this business that we can handle as a two-person job rather than one Uh, from an entrepreneur perspective what was the advantage of working with Christine over working in the restaurant industry it's being my own boss (laughs) I mean technically she's my boss but that's one boss slash partner versus having someone that you have to work under. And one thing I did learn through working corporate is that you can do an extensive amount of work, but you will never get the credit for it. And you will never be the man that owns the work that you do. 
And so I'd rather take the initiative to say, you know what, this is our work. And that's why we say it's 100% money back, because we know what we do and、mm-hmm. we know what we do well. And so we like to be in charge of the work that we do and we're proud of the work that we、mm-hmm. do. Sure. It makes a lot of sense. You know, that, that isn't,、um, that's rare.、Mm. That's rare. Our, our generation is losing that it, yeah, they quickly. They, they, they want to be their own boss, but not because they want to put the work in and, and deliver their value to the company. Is that everybody wants to have this idea、mm-hmm. as some type of deliverance or some、mm-hmm. type of first to the market that they can take advantage of?、That's、you know,、it. and so the skills that you're learning now are only going to be advantageous to you in the future. You know, I, I truly believe that, and I think that you made a good choice, got a good boss. So, yeah, yeah under a corporation,、agree. even though you do a really good job, you can go up to a certain point, you know.、Yeah. But here, if you work really hard, you know, it, yeah. it'll pay you. No, no <laughs> pay top pay situation. There's no、yeah. end goal, right? <laughs> you know, like there's no cap to what you can reach.、Yeah. Sure. It literally is what you put in, it's what you will get. Sure.、Yes. Sure. So, tell me what about your clients? Like, what, what, what are, where are I, they? I、at? started in Korean community. So,、um, I have a lot of Korean,、uh, Korean clientele. But,、uh, last, mostly restaurants? Mostly restaurants, liquor stores too.、Okay. A, lot of, a lot of liquor stores because a lot of liquor stores are owned by Asian, Korean、mm-hmm. people. I don't know if you know. But、um, recently now it's, swifting,、uh, it's changing to more like Indian、uh, community. And, So,、um, liquor store applications are the most hardest application. So, a lot of people, whenever they're trying to buy package store, they make sure they call me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, that. And then,、uh, so I started with Korean community.、Um, so, I do have many Korean clientele, but maybe five, from five years or whatever years back,、um, I started having non Korean clientele. Now, I will say it's like, 50 50,、mm-hmm. right? Yeah, 50 Korean clients, 50% Koreans, and maybe 50% non Korean clients. So we don't do any advertising.、Uh, I do have an av- advertising that goes out in Korean community because it's a group advertising. So,、um, but other than Korean community, I don't have any advertising going out there. So, a lot of people, I don't know how they hear about me, but they hear about me and they contact me all the time and say, Hey, Christine, you know, so and so gave me your phone number. You know, can you help me? Yeah. Sure. So, have you done any selling yet? Selling? What's selling? I'm sorry. Have you done any selling yet?、Like、What do you mean? Creating these relationships with businesses. Or you're, you've,、oh. only, you've only worked on the back end? No, no. Okay, so you're asking me personally.、Mm-hmm. Yes. So we have、um, with the newer clients that h a s come in, and those are the ones that I can communicate with、mm-hmm. um, outside of the <laughs> Korean community. Sure.、Um, but I do try to make the connections with them. And we've actually been interviewing them, growing content for our website.、Mm-hmm. If anything, we also want to know the stories of the clients that we are working with so that we can build relationships. And that's where I come in. I want to build the relationship with them. So if they choose to open a different place, which a lot of them、mm-hmm. do have multiple locations、yes. that they open, they come back to us.、Mm-hmm. And then they can also refer us to the next person that they may come across.、Mm-hmm. And so we want to build that relationship with them. We don't want it to be a one time deal. See ya. We'll never see and work with you again.、Mm-hmm. We're always here. So, usually, business owners, if you have a restaurant, a lot of times they open up their second store, third store, you、mm-hmm. know, or they sell this restaurant and they go to other places and open up another restaurant. So, most of my clients are returning clients. A lot of them are returning clients. And, you know, they, they have a restaurant and they sell it to someone, then they tell the sell,、uh, buyer、uh, to call me. You know, and then the, the buyer becomes my client, you know. So it's like,、um, it, it, it just happens almost every year. You sure. Know? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I have so、You're、many returning two clients. Two and three layers deep in、yes, that network、yes. of some of the people you're、yes. doing business with.、Yes. Well, that's exciting. And it'll bode well for you in the future, obviously.、Mm-hmm. I mean, you're playing the long game. And the, the short、right. transactional game is. is Short lived success、yeah. is short lived, you know? and not only, not only the、um, clients, you know, buyers or sellers, I do have many people like、um, accountants,、um, I have bank referral lenders,、partners. referral markets, you know, bank、um, lenders,、um, real estate agents, they、uh, are really good referring people. 
for mm-hmm. me because you know they want to make sure i would they, imagine other lawyers that aren't good at what you do probably. others are calling me too yeah. uh, other attorneys are calling Just me don't too. Put them on the spot about it yeah. <laughs> no because other attorneys they don't do alcohol license sure yeah they, they do business transaction they do yeah. all the other stuff yeah, and i they, seriously doubt that is something i would do if i was a lawyer yeah so um, they call it me just seems say, like something that you either learn and really take advantage of the fact that you learn it or you don't learn it and you pay someone like you to do it and you focus on what you're good it, at, which is requires, probably acquisition or. Yeah. And it requires uh, experience, mm-hmm. relationship, too. Oh, you, you have to have a good relationship with cities, um, counties, people who handle this kind of alcohol license. Uh, state, you know, like you tell me, you know, um, I have an application. Um, state agents call me. They know my application. Once I turn in, they know who I am, you know, because I've been doing this for 20 years, you know. Um, so relationship is very, very important in this field. So um, a lot of referral source, you know, they want to make sure their loan goes through, you know. Sure. So they need to make sure this client, this this uh, person who's lending the money from their bank, they you know the the transaction has to go through, the, sure. the closing has to happen, so that they can, you know, have get the money, you know. Sure. So that's where I come in and make sure these people get their license. Yeah. So you've been put in this position over the last year and a half that you have to learn the technical stuff. Mm-hmm. What's the most important thing you've learned from Christine, Christine on the business side? Of the business side of it. Mm -hmm. It's about being an entrepreneur. Taking risk and not letting a no reply be okay. That's not an answer. Mm -hmm. And no reply is not an answer. And continuously contacting that person is not the only answer. You can go... Sometimes it's a risk, but you can go above that person and see where you can go by reaching someone higher or reaching someone else in the same department may not be the best thing with your relationship with that person but sometimes you need to get the job done Mm. and you need to take that risk and from a business standpoint that's what i learned sure well that's a big big thing that you overcome as your your first few years like in that sales and business role is that You have to make phone calls that suck sometimes. Oh, yeah. exactly. I make all the phone Some, calls that she does. Right. You don't want to make, you know? It's right. the tedious ones where you have to talk to people that you don't want to talk to, but you have to do what you got to do. Sure. Yeah. In the beginning, when I was talking to, like, agents, you know, state agents or, you know, county agents, because I was so, I don't know, naive, <laughs> you know, I needed to have a good relationship with these people even though they're not on it, even though they're not returning my call, I didn't really want to like, I don't know. Like You want to take it personally. Yeah, I wanted to have a good relationship. You know what right. I mean? But um, not step on anyone's toes. Yes, 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 exactly. But now I, I do. Because I need to get it done for my client, right. you know. Now I step on their neck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I go above <laughs> the person if I have to. Before I didn't, sure. but now I do. But I learned that actually that is what I have to do, and that is what they need to do. If they're getting paid from government to do the job, then they need to do the job right. And if they're not doing the job right, maybe I should go above and talk to their supervisor. You know what I mean? Right. And then um, <laughs> there are a couple of times I actually had really good agents who helped me a lot. So I put a really good comment about these agents and they got promoted to the next, le- next level too, you know? <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, I, I do what I have to do nowadays before I couldn't. Sure. Because <laughs> I wanted to keep the good relationship. But now I do have a good relationship too. But at the same time, if I have to go above, I do. And sure. they know it. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. It really does make yeah. a lot of sense. And I, th- I do it. I'm yeah. not afraid to do that. <laughs> I think you're very fortunate because you're learning a lot of good stuff. You know, you're, you're learning from someone that's, that's walked the walk in your industry. Yeah. Where do you guys kind of plan to go from here? growth um because like she said we've never done marketing i think you're probably going to grow whether you like it or not yeah well that's our hope you know and as the generations are moving up also the clientele is going to shift and 
that's where I feel like my expertise come in so that we can reach a lower market that is growing, that are eventually going to start their businesses. Also, mm-hmm. stay connected to the ones who are continuously wor- working and growing their businesses now. Um, we just want to grow the market around Georgia. That's really our main goal. If anything, we can get more hands when needed. But right now, we're going to do the best we can with the two pairs of hands that we have all right what do you do when you do it so let's 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 hypothetically say you get to exactly where you want to be in five years okay you you are driving her car you know what i mean (laughs) like you're rich you make whatever you want so what do you do then Look, I'm you're 30. A f- you're 31, okay. and you're mega successful. Okay, I, I'm a firm believer of your only your business is only as good as your team, and yeah. so I want to build a team. I want to build a business that we are working to not just grow our business, not just grow me, but I'm gonna help grow you. I'm like I believe like. I mean, you can't grow by yourself. Like that's yeah. impossible. You know? or you we're, can. But we're you kind can of at that phase that. now. Yeah. Is like. You think, how do you grow a credit card processing company? It's not hire a video guy. Yeah. And pay him a ton of money. Yes. You know? Yeah. So, like, it, you're, we're at that point now where you kind of have these, you're only as good as your team, but you get to yeah. grow in unorthodox mm-hmm. ways. But let's say you put your team together. We right? put my team together. Okay, then I'm going to. You've gonna... got your business as, as, as what you want it as. I went so to a point where the system's very hectic and crazy. You mm-hmm. know, a lot of it's paperwork. We mm-hmm. have bunch of things disorganized i want a system where we can automate things and make it easier for our clients easier for ourselves so that we have things we have people we have clientele we have set prompts that we're not consistently typing up the same thing over and over for each client we're not running through the same things same paperwork i want to have a system that's set like other major Uh big companies all right you've got your system you've got your customer service you've got your sales you've got your person that's acting as your your boss or your manager okay. there what do you do if you can do whatever you, you want to make money <laughs> i want to make money oh you've and got honestly, money let's say okay. let's say and i'm giving you all the success in your okay business. then what I do want you this do to every con- day when you don't have to focus when i don't have business to focus, every day then i am acting i am doing Are my you? separate part yes if i if you're asking what am i doing yeah. in the future when i have my business set up and it's running where it doesn't need me there every day then i am pursuing everything in my life for acting no kidding yeah, I'm so that's serious. Cool. <laughs> I believe that. I believe that. Well, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. You have a couple of whys. You you have a, a couple of missions after. Um, I don't even know if I can answer that that question myself. <laughs> so to put you on the spot like that, I guess isn't very fair. But I have to. Ask, I mean, I don't know. How would you answer it? It's, it's hard, right? Yeah, it's hard, hard, right? <laughs> Thank you. It's hard, right? I like that's what it. I want to do. I don't believe you're ever done. You right. know. We're put here to do something, so let's do something. Sure. Well, I think the thing that that just talking to you guys and looking at it from the outside is you guys have a lot of skills on the technical side and Mm -hmm. from the business aspect. But I think um, just from from my personal experience, from what I've had from you guys, and from my personal experience being a really young sales rep, one thing that I struggled with really early was the ability to look at the big picture. Mm -hmm. You know, so like I could only look – two feet in front of me early because I could see, hey, I met this person. This is their business. I can sign them up and make this amount of money. But then I would go talk to the owner of my company and he would say, but what if we can talk to this person about this and do business with them in this way and make way even more money? So I didn't have that, the skill of looking at the big picture and looking so far ahead um, was something that I didn't develop for a long time. Mm -hmm. And really just by being around people that thought that way, where I kind of trained my brain to be like, okay, well, they can be a client, but also see opportunities for a real partnership in this area. You know, I I think that's one of the coolest traits that you have as a young entrepreneur and that you have as the ability to be a role model for someone Mm -hmm. that's so interested in business is that you're not looking you're not looking at your toes. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, you're not looking straight down in front of you all day. You have your head up and on a swivel and you're looking at all the options that you guys have. And you know, I think it's really cool. I really do. Positive, I, I pat you on the back attitude. as best as possible. Positive attitude is what got me here. Sure. And that's what I tell her all the time. Mm-hmm. You might not have million in your bank, but I imagine myself having million in mm-hmm. my bank. You know, that's my attitude. Well, I ask the yeah. same question for yeah. you. Yeah. 
Millions in your bank. Yeah. (laughs) Systems. Yeah. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? (laughs) I want to retire and travel. (laughs) Yeah. Where are you going first? Uh, Italy. Well, I've been to Italy many times, but I love Italy. Yeah. My boss just went to Italy. Um, He actually just went to Hawaii, too. Hawaii is pretty cool. Yeah. um, That's cool. That's cool. I think that you guys, you, you guys are definitely going to do it. You know, I think, yeah. like I said, I think this is a very unique thing that you guys are doing. Is that mm-hmm. uh, you don't you don't run into a ton of people that are that specific. Mm-hmm. You know, that that specific that know what they're doing, that understand mm-hmm. their industry, and understand what growth looks like. You know, I think that uh, that you guys are really cool. And if we can help with that, I hope we can. You know, I, I think that we can. We we run into a lot of people that are really right at that portion that you guys want to talk to them. So I hope that mm-hmm. we can feed you guys in business as well. And I think it's really really important that you stay in one field if you want to be an expert you know some a lot of young people these days they get into this job and Mm. move to another job another field you know i've been in this industry since 92 legal field you know and i've been doing this alcohol license for last 20 years this is the only thing i know you know and i think that's the reason why i am here where i am yeah yeah diligence persistence yes yes Yes. consistent motion yeah it's Mm-hmm. It gets you a long way. Yes. You know, it gets you a long way. I don't know if you've ever heard the story about the tapping the pencil on the frame of the building. Have you ever mm-hmm. heard that? It's like if you keep tapping, yeah. it creates so much vibration in the mm-hmm. in yes. the foundation of the building that it'll fall down. Yes. You know, just with I've tapping, heard something similar to that one. Tapping your pencil for yeah. long enough. So like that, uh, that's really cool. You know, like I said, is that all I can say to you guys right now is that you guys think a lot well, we think a lot like you guys. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we share a lot of the values of of doing what we do very well and being as valuable as we can to the people that we run across. So mm-hmm. I hope that um, we can help you guys with that, with your value proposition, with as you meet people with what we do. Um, I think that we're probably going to be be pretty. It's probably going to be pretty mm-hmm. straightforward. But I really think that that you guys are going to have a just a killer brand and a killer unique um, experience when people work with you. That that's going to be really good. You know, mm-hmm. as your team builds out, as your technology builds out, which mm-hmm. we should talk about that more. Mm-hmm. Um, like it, it's just going to get easier and easier and better yes. and better and more scalable and more scalable. Mm-hmm. You guys are playing around in a space that not a lot of people are playing around in. You're right. So I hope that we can help you guys. How um, like I, I have to ask like. What is your first thing that that comes to your mind when you think like problems with with this specific problem that you're solving? Like just for my curiosity, like what can go wrong if someone doesn't use you? A lot of things can go wrong. (laughs) Sometimes, you know, the transaction, the purchasing transaction doesn't go uh, the purchase happen. of the business. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow! If if wow. they don't get the license, imagine if you're trying to buy a package store, liquor store. A lot of people when they're buying a package store, it, it's huge money, you know, especially when they're purchasing the property as well. So millions, you know, and then they get a loan from bank. So they go all the way to the closing table, but if they don't have alcohol license, they can't get the loan. The, sure. the the bank will not give you the money until you get your alcohol license. Sure. Some clients, call, you know, some people call me and say, hey, Christine, you know, I got your number. I am trying to buy this package store. Can I, you know, can you help me? And I, I asked them, I said, oh, I see your number from Alabama. Are you a Georgia resident? And they're like, no, I'm trying to move to Georgia and buy a package store. I'm like, you can buy a package store in Georgia if you're not a Georgia resident for one year. So simple thing like that, they don't know. They, you know, sometimes they get into a contract without even realizing that they're not qualified. You know what I mean? So uh, that's the very basic one. And then if you go in detail, there's a lot of documentation that city or county requires and state um, they look at the uh, the financial documentation. If anything goes wrong with the financial documentation, the state's not going to give you the license, and they don't they don't know what to do. You know, sometimes one person is not qualified, and one person is. You know, they don't know that. You know, so a lot of thing has to be reviewed before you turn in the application. I make sure I have perfect paper before I turn in because if you turn in and realize something went wrong on the application 
you can't really go back and change it. You know what I mean? So For sure. Yeah, that. Sure. Yeah, if you want to have a smooth transaction. Slot on the line. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. Cool. Well, how do people get in contact with you if they want to buy something from you, do some business with you, send mm-hmm. you a referral, have a conversation with you more? How do people get in touch with you? They can simply contact um, on the phone, mm-hmm. call me on the phone. A um, lot of times I ask for the address of the business and the uh, if they're buying existing business, I want the current business name and the address so I can... Uh, talk to them, um, looking at their ordinance, looking at their application, because like I said, sometimes it's the city, or sometimes it is the county, you know, I need to first find out where I need to go. And then, you know, I can easily talk to them on the phone, so. Mm-hmm. Sure, yeah. cool. what's your uh, number? Uh, it is 678-481-1246. And for all the people out there that are listening, that want to buy a package store, buy a restaurant, buy a gas station Mm -hmm. that need your help, that are weighing those options. And maybe this is something that they've had difficulty with in the past. Mm -hmm. This is something that they know they're going to have an issue with in the future. What do you say to those people to kind of reassure them and let them know that you guys are going to help them through that process? Uh, My experience, 20 20 years of experience, and it's just how I am. I, 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 I can't fail. I, I, I am very perfection person. I need all my papers to be correct. And, you know, so it's 100% money back guarantee. If I don't get the license for you, you get all your money back. Okay, I've seen many people calling me and saying, hey, Christine, I'm sorry, I hired someone, you know, so-and-so, and this person doesn't even answer my call. My <laughs> my application is up in the air. I don't know what to do. Um, it's so common. It's, it's so common, you know, and then they pay me more money <laughs> right. because I need to correct now, <laughs> you know what I mean? But I make sure I correct everything. I do have many people who can say, hey, Christine did this for me because I've done done it so many times yeah cool yeah well i have to to kind of lend the same question to you is that all of those people that are close to our age that want to be entrepreneurs and own their own business and do their thing what would you say to those people that are kind of kicking around their options look you're trying to open a business right there's a lot of things that you need to do for your business and you want to focus on that so let us focus on what we do best Mm -hmm. and that is what you need to sell in your store but if especially if you're building a business from ground up you have to deal with like your co's you have to deal with inspections you have to deal with the building the last thing you want to worry about is a license to simply sell so worry about your business let's get your business up and we will get the license for you so that you can run your operation yeah many businesses i've seen they open their business and they cannot sell alcohol sure <laughs> at a restaurant they're like we don't have alcohol license yet that's not gonna happen with me i make sure you have your alcohol license when you open up your business yeah cool yeah. well i appreciate you, appreciate you guys coming in and the experiences and what you guys have shared with us today i think that that there's a lot of um, reflection that we can do on what's going on within our own businesses and for those people that are in that industry you know what you've told them is, is definitely very valuable today so i appreciate you guys if you guys have anything else to say that you want the audience to know go ahead the, the platform and the floor is yours but i think that's all the questions i have i think i think you guys painted a very good picture for what it is that you do and the value that you bring and what type of entrepreneurs you are so it's all i can ask yeah we we have your number you gave out your number we also have an, a social media account on instagram kc licensing i can give you that after um that also does advertising for there and you can contact us through that as well cool we'll we'll put it up on there um you know as people are watching so cool i appreciate you guys yeah thank Thank you for for having having us. us thanks